All right, hey, it's Matt, Blankets Garage, and today we're gonna work on this Impala. Well, I said we're gonna work on it. We've kind of already started. So let's get straight into what we're doing and what we've done already, and we'll walk you through everything we do so far, I think. So, here we go. So, so far, this thing had a bad AC condenser, so we started taking it apart, and we found all kinds of other problems wrong with it, such as the radio was cracked, and leaking, well, it wasn't actually cracked, it was leaking at the tank where the tanks and the aluminum radiator come together. The bottom hose was leaking and the water pump was leaking. So, change the condenser turned into changing everything else. So let's lean on in here real quick. We'll start by telling you I've already changed the water pump. To change the water pump on one of these guys, which it's really impossible to see the water pump from here, but this is it right there. You pull the battery, the battery tray, and then the water pump is five 10 millimeter bolts. That's easy. So water pump is done. We're also gonna go ahead and change the thermostat while we're in here. And you can see it right here. There's the thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead and swap that guy while we're in here changing everything else. That's easy, two 10 millimeter bolts. And then we gotta finish putting the radiator in. So if you look, there's nothing there. It's all naked and empty. Uh, there's only three bolts or five bolts that hold the radiator in. There's a 10 millimeter right here and then there's a 10 millimeter at the fan that bolts to the radiator. There's one 10 millimeter right here that bolts the fan to the core support and then same thing, a 10 at the top that bolts the radiator in and a 10 right there that holds the fan, the fan shroud in. And that's all that holds it in. Now, I got decent sized hands, but there ain't no room in there. So for now, this is where we'd be. I guess I will uh, bring you back as things progress. Probably not gonna film a lot of this because there's a lot of cursing while working on this piece of shit. I mean, junk. So, bring it back in a bit. All right, I figured I'll go ahead and show you outside the car um, prior to trying to show you inside the car because it's gonna be a lot harder. So here's the AC, sorry, here's the radiator. See this, get the little slip drop, drop ends right here. Just like most modern cars, we'll reach over here. Grab the AC condenser, got two lines, one with a quick disconnect, which I might potentially have broken. Zip ties fix all. And second with a bolt-in sleeve right here. So yeah, all that's gonna work out great. So now all this guy does is he takes and turns just like this. A little slide and lock right into the face of the radiator. I don't know, something like that. I need two hands. All right, so like I said, just slide locks right into the radiator. Lines hang off the side, just like most modern day cars, but it's next to impossible to see this in the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the AC condenser, slide it in, set it in place, because I don't think it'll all fit in together. Too much meat right here. So we'll set the AC condenser in first and then drop the radiator in behind it, hook the AC condenser on it and then drop the radiator in its mounts. So let's get started. Oh, and uh, here's the clip that I potentially might have broken. So it's supposed to go on and lock over. Well, there's supposed to be a flat tab that goes all the way across the top that holds these pins down and one of the pins might be broken. So we potentially are gonna zip tie this. I haven't decided if I'm gonna order a new one yet. The wife wants me to, but we'll see. All right, hey, my wife in the background. She's hiding on the four-wheeler. So, we can't see nothing down in there. It's dark as shit up in there. All right, well, we're about to reuse this lovely clip that she's excited about. Easy. We're gonna wrap it around, clip it, and then we're gonna wrap two zip ties on it and call it good enough. Because the clip does the work, the zip ties just keep the clip from opening. So now, let's take a peek under the hood of this baby as far as we can. Here we go. Okay, so what we got so far, brand new radiator. Now, this thing is a chore to get that radiator in there. It's a twist, turn, fight. It's not fun. You have to leave the bottom trans, the top trans line loose right here until we get the fan in because the fan falls in and locks into these little clips in this lock right here. The AC lines are right here, as you can see. Oops, no you can't, because I'm not even looking at them. All right, there's the AC lines right there. 
So this one right here gets the nut, that one right there gets the clip. So we're gonna put the clip on him. It just clips around it just like my hand is grabbing that thing right there. And we're gonna put a couple zip ties around him. It'll be just fine. And then we change the thermostat housing, which I don't even know if you'll be able to see because you can't see hardly anything. See the shiny aluminum right there? Right, right below the exhaust manifold? That's thermostat housing. It was probably worse than changing the radiator. So I'm glad I did that now. So for those who were wondering, I actually wouldn't suggest buying one of these cars if you don't know how to work on them because you're going to pay good money for somebody to work on them. Good thing I know what I'm doing. Sort of. Maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Bring it back. All right. Well, we didn't make it too much farther, but I've, I've pulled vacuum down for about 10 to 15, 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that, just to check and see if the system's got any leaks in it. We've got all the radiator hoses hooked up, except for the little vent ho hose that goes from here to the top right here that's okay we'll worry about him later so we're gonna go ahead and check the vacuum we're checking the vacuum on the AC system good job uh, check the vacuum on the AC system to make sure that we're don't have any leaks and then I'll pull another 30 to 45 minute vacuum on it because the system has been open to the weather and want to make sure there's no moisture in the system so that's what we're doing I'm going to bed disgusting hot tired later all right so late late last night we pull a vacuum on this system let it sit shut it down it had somewhere around 24 to 25 inches of vacuum or whatever they call it yeah so let's uh, turn the valve on and see where we're at now vacuum wise so reach up here let's see let's first go over here to the gauge before we do anything see what the gauge has got to say about the story so here's where we were last night it's actually went down just a tad a bit on the gauge. Now, let's uh, reach in here. I'll turn this valve on. All right. Let's come back over here. We'll see how much we've lost or kept here. And there she is, which is pretty good if you ask me. All right. So the system's holding pressure or holding vacuum, which means oh, we're good to put free on it. So let's finish assembling this joker. All right. Well, I know it don't look like a lot because from here, all it looks like the airbox is done. But here we go. We'll zoom you in. So we got the airbox, all the front dress, the fans is on. So now we got left is this, uh oh, about to break my neck, serpentine belt. It's fun. So, we'll get down here, we'll take this tire off, we'll check the brakes while we're in there, and see what we need to fix it. All right, and just for the sake of fun, I want to show you what I just found. So, we'll squatted down here, I said, I wonder what size these lug nuts are. Well, this is what size they are. When you buy a car, check the lug nuts. Had three loose ones. Now, I don't have that socket. So now that we're standing here together, let's see. Is this one loose too? Look at that. One more. Good Lord. Yeah, not cool. Not cool at all. Double check your lug nuts when you buy a car. All right, she's running. She lives, sort of, maybe. We don't know yet. We went straight to charge the AC and said screw the rest of the stuff. So we filled it full of water for a test run, make sure we don't have no leaks, then we'll drain it, put antifreeze in it. So far, we've put one can of Freon in her, and we're sitting at about, I don't know, 30 pounds, and then the high side just freaking skyrocketed. That's not good. Why did the high side do that? Something's going on in the system right there. That's weird as all get out. Oh, the fans just come on. That's why. So now the fans are on. Driving her on down to where she belongs. I mean, the high side ran all the way up to like 400. That's pretty high. Fans are running like they're supposed to. 
with the fans on we're sitting at what 155 160 ish 160 160 165 yeah something like that all right let's put another half can in her but that's where we're at so far all right there she is she's running we got the ac i overcharged it slightly to about 210 instead of 205 like i was supposed to probably would help if i'd actually open the door wouldn't it here let's take a peek at all this nonsense up in here here you go there's a gauge cluster water temp looks quite nice ac is working up in here like it's supposed to be interior's pretty nice the wife's been working on cleaning it because it was a little dirty when we got it but it's pretty nice there you go Unfortunately, that's a 2006 option. 2007, they changed a little bit. It's got 16 inch wheels, supposed to 18s. Fuel exhaust. Buffalo delete. Not my favorite, but it sounds pretty good. seats as they should be cold air thank god i'm a sissy when it comes to the heat there it is so uh as always like share comment subscribe i read them all i answer them all and uh we'll go from there so hope y'all enjoyed it and if you want to see some more on these little turd cars i like to work on i don't really like working on let me know later